In this video, we are going to see about the ethmoid bone. So this ethmoid bone is an unpaired bone. It is a fragile bone and a pneumatic bone. It has two part, a horizontal plate that is called as the cribriform plate and a cuboidal mass, lateral mass on either side that is called as the labyrinth. So this is cuboidal, air filled and the fragile part of the bone. Next we will see the cribriform plate. So this cribriform plate, it fills up the ethmoid notch between the two orbital plate of the frontal bone. So if you see in the base of the skull, the cranial cavity, you can see the ethmoid notch. So this is a notch. So this fills the ethmoid notch between the two orbital plate of the frontal bone. So this is the orbital plate. So between this two plate you get this notch and it, this cribriform plate fills the ethmoid notch between the two orbital plates of the frontal bone. Next if you see the features of the cribriform plate it has a posterior margin. So this is the posterior margin. This is an upper surface and you have the lower surface. The upper surface, it forms the floor for the anterior cranial fossa and here it possesses numerous apertures for the passage of the olfactory nerve. In the median plane, the upper surface presents a triangular elevation that is called as the crista gallae. So this crista galle has a long posterior border. So this gives attachment to the anterior end of the fox cerebri. And the anterior border of the crista galle, it diverges to form the ala. And it forms the posterior boundary of the foramen cecum. and with the frontal bone. The lower surface of the cribriform plate, it forms a roof of the nasal cavity and in, in the median plane, it presents a perpendicular plate. So this is the perpendicular plate, which is the quadrilateral in shape and this is the anterior border so this anterior border articulates with the nasal spine of the frontal bone and also with the crest which is formed by the union of two nasal bones. And this is a posterior border. The upper part of the posterior border articulates with the sphenoidal crest. The lower part of the posterior border articulates with the omer bone. This is the inferior border of the perpendicular plate. So this inferior border receives the attachment of the septal cartilage of the nose. So this is a picture to show you the articulation of the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. So this is a perpendicular plate and this is the anterior border which articulates with the nasal spine of the frontal bone and the crest which is formed by the union of two nasal bones and this is the posterior border the upper part articulates with the sphenoidal crest and the lower part articulating with the omer bone and this is the inferior border which receives attachment of the septal cartilage and this is the posterior margin this posterior margin of the cribriform plate it articulates with the ethmoid spine of the sphenoid bone I'll show you in the cranial base, cranial cavity. So here you can see, so this is the posterior margin. So this posterior margin articulates with the spine, ethmoidal spine of the sphenoid bone. So next we'll see the labyrinth of the ethmoid bone. The labyrinth of the ethmoid bone is cuboidal 
and it is presents the orbital plate laterally and the nasal plate medially and which consists of uh, air cells which are arranged in groups like anterior, middle and posterior forming the air sinuses, anterior, middle and the posterior ethmoidal air sinuses. The upper surface of the labyrinth, so this is the upper surface of the labyrinth, it articulates with the orbital medial margin of the orbital plate of the frontal bone, plate of frontal bone and this presents uh, two canals, an anterior and the posterior ethmoidal canal for the passage of anterior and posterior ethmoidal vessels and the nerves. This is the anterior surface of the labyrinth. This anterior surface, it articulates with the lacrimal bone and also with the frontal process of the maxilla, completing the anterior ethmoidal air sinus. The lower surface, so this is the lower surface, this articulates with the medial margin of the orbital surface of the body of the maxilla. So here if you see this is the orbital plate, so this is the lateral plate. This forms the medial wall of the orbit and it overlaps the posterior and mid middle ethmoidal air cells. So if you see here you can see this is an orbital plate of the ethmoid bone. So this forms the medial wall of the orbit. and here the lower surface it articulates with the maxilla, the medial margin of the orbital surface of the body of the maxilla. The medial surface of the labyrinth it presents the nasal plate. The nasal plate forms a part of the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. Below it forms a curved plate that forms the middle nasal concha. So this is con convex medially and anteriorly it articulates with the ethmoidal crest of the frontal process of the maxilla and posteriorly it articulates with the ethmoidal crest of the perpendicular plate of the palatine bone. And the space lateral to the me middle concha is called as the middle meatus. So this picture shows you the articulation of the middle concha. So anteriorly it articulates with, so this is, so this picture shows you the articulation of the middle concha Anteriorly, it articulates with the ethmoidal crest of the frontal process of the maxilla and posteriorly, it articulates with the ethmoidal crest of the perpendicular plate of the palatine bone. So, this is a perpendicular plate of the palatine bone. So, this presents the crest. So, that is the ethmoidal crest of the perpendicular plate of the palatine bone. The space lateral to the middle concha is, no, is the middle meatus. So this middle meatus shows different features. There is a hook like process. So this process is called as the uncinate process. And this joins with the ethmoidal process of the inferior nasal concha. Then you have an elevation in this region that is called as the bulla. So the bulla ethmoidalis is a rounded elevation containing the middle ethmoidal air cell and it projects into the lateral wall of the middle meatus. So the middle ethmoidal cells they open on or above this bulla. So it also shows a semilunar opening that is called as the hiatus semilunaris. So this is the hiatus semilunaris uh, which is bounded Below and by the uncinate process and above by the bulla ethmoidalis. 
A bony passage that is called as the infundibulum extends upward and forward within the labyrinth from the anterior part of the hiatus semilunaris and receives the opening of the anterior ethmoidal air sinus. And this tip, the anterior end, usually communicates with the frontal sinus through the frontonasal duct. So this is a picture to show you the uncinate process and the bulla ethmoidalis. So in the lower picture you get this is the elevation that is the bulla ethmoidalis and into which in or above the middle ethmoidal air sinuses open and this is the uncinate process. So this uncinate process in between these two you get the hiatus semilunaris. So this is a hiatus semilunaris. The anterior part of the hiatus semilunaris it leads to the infundibulum. The tip it leads to the frontonasal duct. The posterior part of the nasal plate it presents a opening that is the superior meatus above the middle nasal concha. So this is the middle nasal concha this opening above the middle nasal concha is the superior meatus. So this is limited medially by the superior concha. So this is the superior concha. The superior meatus receives the opening of the posterior ethmoidal ear sinus. The space above the superior mea, uh, concha. So this is a superior concha. Above this, the space is called as the sphenoid ethmoidal recess so into which the sphenoidal air sinus opens the fracture of the cribriform plate of the ethmoid produces rhinorrhea so with the discharge of the cerebrospinal fluid through the nose thanks for watching that video subscribe for my channel